Hello and welcome to our tutorial series. Today we will talk about another exciting feature of the eCar charging suite, namely load management and minimum current detection. Both are already part of the charging suite and are located on the TIA side, the PLC part of the application. In this video I will deep dive into the details about how the load management works, i.e. how the load management decides and also explain the min current detection. Then I will show which important setting options are part of the load management. First, I would like to show you where the load management and the min current detection take place. For this, I brought this graphic with me. As you see, at the beginning of charging, we are in the state available. If a user now comes to the charging pole and connects his car, the charging pole jumps to the preparing state. If the user is now logging in, a transaction is started and the charging pole goes to the charging state. In the charging state, the min current detection starts automatically and determines the minimum current the car needs to charge. We will later see exactly how it is done. Once the min current detection is complete, the load management starts to work with the car and determines how much electric power is available. Now that we know where the two functions take place, I will go into more detail about the individual functions. The min current detection target is to find out how much current must be supplied to the car as a minimum. Some cars have a certain threshold value. If this value is not reached, they'll end up in an error state. To eliminate these errors and to avoid it, we included the min current detection. This starts with a very high current value, which is transmitted to the car, and then it checks whether the car is still charging or not. It then regulates the current further down and checks again and again whether the car is still being charged. If this is not the case, it remembers the last current that could be supplied, at which the car was still charging and ends the action. The load management is then switched on. The sense behind the load management is to distribute all the electric power that the station has available and to ensure that as many cars as possible are being charged evenly. There are three scenarios for this, which the load management distinguishes between. The first scenario that the load management checks is that there is enough power available to supply all cars with the maximum amount of power. This is what we see here in the graphic that is shown next to me. We have a station here that can work with 70 amps. That means that all the connected charging points can draw on 70 amps and share the 70 amps. Furthermore, we see in the diagram that three cars are connected that can be charged with a maximum of 16 amps each. Since we have enough current for all the three cars, we can also supply each car with a maximum 16 amps and the cars charge with 16 amps. The next load management scenario describes a shortage. This means that the station does not provide enough electric power to supply all cars with the maximum amount of electricity. To make the whole thing a little clearer, here is a similar diagram to the first scenario. However, now with a station that is supplied with 30 amps, which means that all connected cars can charge with a total of 30 amps. We have also connected three cars, which can charge with a maximum of 16 amps, just like in the first scenario. However, because the station only has 30 amps available, so not enough current to supply each car with the 16 amps, we now divide the current evenly. This means that we try to distribute the current as evenly as possible among all the cars. In this case, each car gets 10 amps. We have used the entire 30 amps and each car charges with the maximum current possible for the station. In the last scenario for the load management, the station does not have enough current to supply each car with its min current. This means that the previously detected min current of the car still plays a role here. If this is the case, the so-called carousel mechanism kicks in. This means that the load management system creates a list of all the cars that are connected to the charging point. 
In the first position is the car that I connected last and in the last position is the car that came first. The load management now tries to supply the min current of the car in the first place. Then it goes to the second place and tries to deliver the min current there as well. It does it until the station has no more current available. After a certain amount of time, the load management rotates through the list and redistributes the power across the cars. However, this also means that a certain number of cars will always be unable to charge. The rotation ensures that each car is temporarily charged piece by piece. That actually is how the min current detection and the load management work. We have seen how the load management decides the entire thing and now we come to important settings that are related to min current detection and load management. To set the min current detection, I have to go back in our TIA project. I then open the program block. Here I go to the folder 00 core functions and open the min current detection folder. Then I go to the DB inst min current detections. All the variables for this block are now listed here and I open the stat current steps. Here I can see the steps that the min current detection runs through. If I want to change these steps, I just enter new values here. It is always important that the highest value is in the first place. Now I can set the values for the load management. To do this, I have to go back to my configuration JSON. Here I now have two values that are important for load management. On the one hand, there is the connector max current. The logical limit for the station and for the connectors is entered here. In this case, zero always means that this is the value for the station. So my station now has 320 amps available and each connector is logically allocated 16 amps. The second important value is the installation max current. Again, the value is divided once for the station and once for the connectors. These were the important values for our load management. So we have now seen the load management is the perfect tool to manage the station's existing power as efficient as possible. In the next video, I will show you how you can expand the existing repertoire of functions of eCar charging suite with your own function as easily as possible and still stick to our structures. Thank you for your attention and see you in the next video.